Hi, welcome to today's Piece of Peace. Again, can't tell you enough how staying in with a heart of gratitude when you open up your day, worship God, write out the things that you're grateful for. I learned last night in one of my classes that to practice being in gratitude for five minutes at a time, three times a day can actually rewire how your brain defaults. So our neurotransmitters, we can rewire our neural pathways um, by practicing different things. So my charge to you, as well as to myself, as I uh, picked up this piece, this nugget last night, is like to stay in gratitude for five solid minutes. Resting in God's gratitude. You don't have to put out a list like, I'm thankful that I'm healthy, I'm thankful for my bed, I'm thankful for... Could be that, but, you know, rest in his presence, receive his love, stay in that area of you are loved, but with a grateful heart as your mind starts to drift off into something different, bring it right back into his presence, grateful that he is present to you. Practice that three times a day for five minutes and watch how, I don't know if many of you have like a negative default, you could wake up with a negative thought or a hurried thought on your mind or whatever, but start to practice just five minutes of gratitude, morning, noon, and night, when you wake up, when you have your lunch or your break during the day, and before you go to bed. Let it be the last thing you do before you go to bed. So that is what you're ruminating on, what you're thinking upon as you fall asleep. Anyway, see how the neural pathways will change from negative default to a gratitude default, where you'll see the beauty in things, where you'll start to have a better outlook on people, everything. So that's a practice. Today I'm going to be reading out of Ecclesiastes, and we're going to be in um, we're going to be in chapter ten, verses one through fourteen. I'm reading out of Our Daily Bread. You can download an app onto your smartphone. You can order these little booklets online. This today's um, author has titled the devotion "Learning from Foolishness," and uh, Con Campbell is the author of this one. So here we are, uh, Ecclesiastes ten one through fourteen. As dead flies give perfume a bad smell, so a little folly outweighs wisdom and honor. The heart of the wise inclines to the right, but the heart of the fool is to the left. Even as he walks along the road, the fool lacks sense and know, and shows everyone how stupid he is. If a ruler's anger rises against you, do not leave your post. Calmness can lay great Calmness can lay great errors to rest. I highlighted that one. There is an evil I have seen under the sun and the sort of error that arises from a ruler. Fools are put in high positions while the rich occupy the low ones. I have seen slaves on horseback while princes go on foot like slaves. Whoever digs a pit may fall into it and whoever breaks through a wall may be bitten by a snake. Whoever quarries stone may be injured by them, and whoever splits logs may be endangered by them. If an axe is dull, this is another one I highlighted, if the axe is dull and its edges unsharpened, more strength is needed, but skill will be success. When it said, if an axe is dull and its edge, edges unsharpened, more strength is needed, how much more when we're not spending time with God? where our edges are sharpened when we're with him, where our um, ax is, is not dull, it's sharpened, and how much less strength it takes to manage, um, or how much less capacity and strength it takes to manage the harder things in that day. But when we're not with him, we're not in his presence, it's as if our ax is dull and our edges are unsharpened and it takes a ton of strength to get through. That was another one I highlighted. If a snake bites before it is charmed, there is no profit for the charmer. Words from a wise man's mouth are gracious, but a fool is consumed by his own lips. Words from a wise man's mouth are gracious, but a fool is consumed by his own lips. At the beginning, 
His words are folly, and at the end they are wicked madness. And the fool multiplies words. No one knows what is coming. Who can tell him what will happen after him? Khan goes on to say, A man walked into a convenience store in Wollongong, Australia. He put a $20 bill on the counter and asked for change. When the clerk opened the cash drawer, the man pulled a gun and asked for all the cash in the register, which the clerk promptly provided. The man took the cash from the clerk and fled, leaving the $20 bill on the counter. The total amount of cash he got from the drawer, $15. I laughed out loud at that. We all act foolishly at times. Even if, unlike this thief, we're trying to do the right thing, the key is how we learn from our foolish behavior. Without correction, our poor choices can become habits, which will negatively shape our character. We'll become fools who lack sense. Sometimes it's hard to admit our foolishness because of the extra work it requires. Perhaps we need to reflect on a particular character flaw. Just the other day, there was a person on my team that was expressing how my, one of my character flaws was negatively impacting him. I felt horrible. It was just like, I've struggled with, with this my whole life. Um, and I don't want it to impact somebody. I do ask God to help me. My mother used to tease me about how what time she was going to ask me to come somewhere because she knew she'd have to say 15 minutes later um, or 15 minutes earlier if she wanted me on time because I'm notoriously 15 minutes off. No matter how much time I get up earlier to get somewhere, no matter what, it always seems like I'm showing up just a wee bit too late. Never too late when I have to be on the platform or on stage. That I'm on time for. It seems like though, but any other like meeting or um, something, I'm always running this tiny bit late. I want God to deliver me of that because I'm seeing it negatively impact people around me. And I don't want it. I even wrote in there, my character flaw of being 15 minutes late. And it's, he says, perhaps we need to reflect on a particular char character flaw and that's painful. Or maybe we need to admit that a decision was made hastily and next time we should take more care. Whatever the reason, it never pays to ignore our foolish ways. Thankfully, God can use our foolishness to, to discipline and shape us. Discipline isn't pleasant at the time, but its training yields good fruit in the long run. Let's accept our Father's discipline for our foolish behavior and ask him to make us more like sons and daughters he intends us to be. God is never late. God is always on the right time. So if I'm going to bear his image, I want that to happen. So I think having this conversation with this beautiful person on my team has prodded me to really put an effort into not being late because of how it negatively impacts people around me. And it's, my heart is not to discard their time or not think that their time is important because it is to me and I'm grateful for their time. But he's helping me with the foolishness of me and he's pruning my character and I'm grateful for that. Let us accept the Father's discipline for our foolish behavior and ask him to make us more like sons and daughters he intends us to be. Khan's charge was this. What's a recent foolish choice you've made? What do you think God wants you to learn from it? And this prayer. Thank you, Father, for using my foolishness to train me. May I accept your discipline graciously as you continue to work in me. And let us offer that same graciousness to the work he's continuing in everyone around us. That leads me to... Jesus Calling, which is Sarah Young's book. You can, da you can order her book online. She writes from the perspective of God speaking to us, and this is what she says today. Come to me with empty hands and an open heart, ready to receive abundant blessings. I know the depth and breadth of your neediness, even in my trying to be on time. Your life path has been difficult. 
draining you of strength, come to me for nurture. Let me fill you up with my presence, I and you and you and me. My power flows fr most freely into weak ones aware of their need for me. I'm going to repeat that line. My power flows most freely into weak ones aware of their need for me. Let us all be aware of our need for him. Faltering steps of dependence are not lack of faith. They are links to my presence. And that is today's piece of peace. God bless you.